welcome back to the channel favor farms thank you for joining me i'm outside on this beautiful day although every day is a beautiful day i should say it's a warm sunny day i think it's like the mid 70s the weather we've been waiting for to get back out in the garden one of the things i decided i wanted to do today is cover some of the myths of um why we can't grow our own food and i'm going to try to get through this without rushing rushing but my children were outside they just went inside so now it's just myself and the kitties and i'm going to try to get this um, video out before they come crashing out of the door so i want to debunk some myths because i have people asking me questions or sometimes um, contacting me and they're telling me why they can't grow their own food and my cat is out here my tripod broke right when I came out here and so I have this um, camera kind of sitting up on another chair and of course as soon as I come out to do this my cats come up on the porch and of course he is hitting up against the legs of the chair that's little kitties for you but I love my little kitties I would pick them up and show you but then I'll have all that cat hair on me anyway back to the myths one of the, I guess, one of the myths I hear the most is, oh, I don't have a lot of acres, or I don't have a lot of space indoors. You don't need acres and acres of land. You don't need tons and tons of space and huge windows. What you need is just some space to grow some food. And when I say that, um... I'm referring to sometimes people say, well, I have an apartment, so I don't have a yard. Or I live in a townhouse, so my backyard is really small. No problem. There are so many ways that you can garden. There's so many different types now. Things are just um, convenient. You can use containers to garden. Unlike before when we only would garden, you know, outside, actually in the dirt, in a yard, or a garden space right now you can get grow bags you can get containers I use containers myself because it's just easier in terms of weeds and so you can buy those totes you know you have storage totes and you can drill holes in the bottom and on the sides and you can buy your dirt and you can plant right in those totes you can use any type of container and like I said if you don't have containers you can you can always use grow bags. They actually have bags just for growing, meaning they're just for dirt, okay? Um, you don't need tons of space in the house. I start my seedlings indoors, and I use a window, a window that faces the sun. And so as long as you have a window that you can put your plants in or a table, you can put in front of your window where the sun is, you can start your seedlings also um let me see the thought just just lost the thought um space oh if you have a balcony you can put things and grow planters grow bags containers on your balcony you can put them on a deck you can put them in a small yard as a matter of fact you can get so creative you can use like your lawn chairs and you can put um, your grow containers or grow bags in that. You don't even have to bend down. You can just stand up and water and do what you need to do. And so that is a myth. You do not need acres and acres of land and tons of tons of space inside. No, you need enough space just to get started. And then once you get started, you can progress and you can get more containers or you can get more grow bags or whatever, you know, however you choose to grow. But don't let that stop you. Don't let that stop you. You can grow your own food in a limited space. As a matter of fact, I have a whole video earlier showing you how you can use containers because I have containers right on my deck. I recycle some stuff and I grow right on my deck. Um, the next myth, I have a board, so I'm looking at it, is you have to grow a lot. Like you think because you see these videos with these gardeners and they have all of this food and tons and tons of space, you have to, you don't. If you are by yourself or it's just you and your child or you and your husband, you can grow just what you need and you can grow extra if you 
want to help someone. You know, if you have people in your family and let's say they say, I can't grow or whatever, and you want to grow a little extra, you can do that. But you only need to grow what it is you need to grow. Okay. Let me say it again. You only need to grow what it is you need to grow. If you don't need a whole lot, then you don't have to grow a whole lot. You can grow enough for you and your family or you and your family and a best friend or something. Let's say you have an elderly mom or dad and maybe they can't get out in the yard. And so you might want to grow a little extra to share. I'm all about, you know, growing extra to share. But the point being, just because you garden or you grow your own food it doesn't mean you have to grow tons and tons of food because when we think of tons and tons of food what do we think tons and tons of work right tons and tons of time you don't have to do that if you just want to start out with an herb garden you can do that if you just want to start out with a couple of things of kale you can do that if you just want to try some tomatoes you don't have to grow a lot all right number three I don't know what this green thumb thing is about, but it's false. You don't have to have a green thumb. I've had people say, well, you know, I don't have a green thumb. Every time I plant something, it dies or it doesn't grow. It's just like anything else. If there's a problem, you just need to find a solution. And most of the time, if you look for a solution, you'll find it. Because it's not you that's growing it. You're using your hands to put a seed in some dirt and you'll use your hands to water it unless it's outside, but you're not the one responsible for the growth. The growth is in the seed. The life is in the seed. So if you know how to take a seed and put it in some dirt and cover that seed up, that's really the knowledge that you need in terms of, um, well, I need to get this. I need to get a fertilizer. We don't want to make things complicated. We just want to get some seeds in the dirt and get some food growing, all right? You don't need a green thumb. What you do need to do, however, if you start out and you're brand new, you, I always advise or suggest that you get yourself some potting soil for indoors and that, or that you get some seed starting soil. That, most of the time, is the problem. People might go and just get some dirt from out of their yard. And a lot of times that works. But it really depends on the type of dirt you have. Because lots of the dirt that's outside, because it's in nature, it may have bugs. It may have a little clay. And those things that may not quite click indoors. And it may be a little too hard for a seedling to pop up. I like to say that. And so what you need to do is most of the time... Start your seedlings indoors with some indoor potting soil or start your seedlings indoors with some seed starting soil mix. It has all the nutrients you need. You put your seedlings in a little cup and in a few, a few days you'll see sprouts. And then from there you can transfer them outside or into a container. If you use a container, it's okay to get soil out of your yard if you have some dirt or whatever. If not, you can buy the soil. So you don't have to have a lot of work or it's not a lot of work involved. Just go get a bag of potting soil. Get a bag of something that grows vegetables. You can ask whoever's working there, hey, I'm, I'm starting my you know, tomatoes or my broccoli or my cucumbers in a container. What do you suggest? And you can always read in it. So you get some dirt and maybe some compost. And that's about it. You mix that up in your container. You put your seeds in it. And I don't know why they would not grow. Like the seed does the job. It needs sun. It needs some type of light. If it's indoors, you need a sunny window. If you don't have a good sunny window, you can use some grow lights. But you can still grow and start your seedlings indoors until you can get them outside or into a container. And so you do not need a green thumb. You just need no, you just need to know what to get. All right. And that is some good soil that starts your seedlings out. 
and if you take them out and if you have a yard let's say it has too much grit or sand you just add some compost and some regular dirt if you have that kind of dirt that when it gets wet it gets real hard like clay that means you have a lot of clay in it you just have to make some amendments I mean getting some cow manure or some manure or some compost and working it in that dirt a little bit and get your seedlings in. So no, you do not need a green thumb. Especially now we're in the age of technology where you don't even have to get a book anymore. I mean, when I was coming up, you at least had to go to the library and get a book. Now you can Google everything. Hey, you can watch me on my channel when I do these things. And so, no, you don't need a green thumb. All you have to do is have the desire and the willingness to learn and do it um it's too hard i hear people say that oh my goodness it's just so hard it's not hard it's just a matter of and i know i'm being redundant taking a seed putting it in some dirt covering it up watering it making sure it has some light and the seed does everything itself that's how it's set up you don't have to stand there and watch it you make sure it stays moist not dry and not muddy right in the middle moist all right you don't want it dry and you don't want it want it muddy all right so it's not hard at all as a matter of fact it's one of the easier things you can do like people talk about coding and writing programs put a seed in the ground you know put some seed in the dirt like how hard is that if you can sit and um code and write these um computer programs and build websites surely you can stick your finger in in a um dirt and put a seed in it all right not enough time like i get that lots of people i don't have time to do that i don't have since when do we not have time to feed ourselves it's not so overly time consuming you pick a date like anything else, you say, this is the day I'm going to set aside an hour or two. I'm going to get my dirt. I'm going to get my pots or my container or my whatever. And I'm going to grow some food today. You get your space now that it's warming up outside, inside, whatever. You just settle to do it. It has nothing to do with not having enough time. This is the thing I've always taught my children. We make time for the things we want to do. If you want to grow your own food, you'll make the time to do it. And now is a time when so many of us are quarantined and, you know, we're not getting out like we used to. So most of us have more time than ever when you think about it. Like this is the best time while you're inside and things are not quite locked down, but, you know, things are still limited. This is the best time to go ahead and invest your time instead of wasting time. How much time do we... I'll say we, even though I don't, how much time is spent watching cable? How much time is spent perusing? You know, you just go to look for one post on Facebook and the next thing is 10 minutes and 20 minutes. And you look up, you, you're on an, an hour straight just looking at posts and commenting and LOL and all of that. Well, guess what? Those hours add up. An hour of cable, an hour of Facebook, an hour of Instagram, uh, what else is out there? Twitter and I don't know what else is out there, but all of those things. And when you look up, if you sit and calculate that time, you probably have three to four to five hours that were spent being entertained and on social media when you could be putting a seed in that ground and growing some food. So it's not whether or not we have enough time. It's whether or not we plan, organize and use our time wisely. I mean, you know, let's be honest. Everybody's mantra is, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. How busy can one person be? I mean, like, we're all busy, but most of us are home now more than ever. I have children, I have children, I have children, and I homeschool. So I get that. I have children, I homeschool the three of them, I work from home, all of this stuff. But guess what? Growing food is important. For my family and so i make time to do it so let's do this let's just make time and not make excuses you'll find that i try to be really loving but straight to the point because i think there's enough people out there saying all the feel good stuff right the bottom line we need to make time to grow our own food so 
divest out of all these other things where we're entertaining ourselves to death almost and invest in growing your own food and bringing life to you and your family. The next myth I have, people say, well, I don't own land. I rent my house. I rent my apartment. I rent my townhouse. No problem. That's exactly why they have containers and grow bags and grow boxes. You name it. You don't have to dig up your soil. If you're not in a position where it's not your land, no problem. Look into getting yourself containers. When I say container, I mean a big enough container like those totes, you know, everybody's got those totes. We've packed up things and put them in the, wherever in the um, storage or something. You can go to your local store. Those, um, you know, uh, buy everything you need at one stop shop stores <laughs> and you can get containers all sizes. Drill holes in the bottom and on the side for drainage. And right there, you have a grow box. If you have some skills with these hands, you can put some wood together. Get some 4 by 4s make yourself a box, put a bottom under it. You can make a grow box if you got those kind of skills. I do not, so I go out and I buy them. You can buy pots, and again, there are such things as grow bags. That means they are breathable, and so the dirt... And everything breathes and you can water it and everything travels through. They are specifically for growing food. They're called grow bags. And so these are just some of the myths that I have heard. I'm sure there are more. If there's something else that you can say, hey, well, I don't think I can grow food because put it in the comment section. I'd love to read it and see what we can do because really it's no reason why we can't grow food. If you think it's too much, start out with a little herb garden. You can get a little box and grow some basil, grow some oregano, grow some peppermint. Just, you know, get your feet a little wet, get your hands a little dirty and see. And then after that, maybe you'll feel like, hey, I got enough confidence. I grew my own herbs, you know. Um, what else is easy? You can, Like I say, you can do an herb garden. Something that um, grows relatively easy, I think, are tomatoes. I mean, it was one year we were all growing tomatoes when we see each other. We said, you want some tomatoes? No, we're trying to give some away. Um, tomatoes, what else for a beginner? Cucumbers are relatively easy. And oh my goodness, kale. Now, kale is kind of like a fall crop because when it gets too hot, kale will shrivel up. So in the fall, kale, let me tell you, you drop that in the ground and those babies pop up so fast and you can cut them over and over to grow back. So again, let me just go down my list. You don't need tons and tons of space indoors. You don't need acres and acres of land. You do not have to grow a whole lot. You can grow a little extra. You don't need a whatever this green thumb is. It is not too hard. You do have enough time and you don't have to own your own land. All you have to do is have something portable. So after you have grown whatever for that season, you can take that dirt, you can put it in some plastic or in, keep it in your container, seal it up until the next year and voila, break it back out. The bags, you can put your dirt, take them out of the grow bags, put them in a container, fold your bags up for the next year. No problem. You don't have to dig up any yard. And I'm going to tell you something else we need to consider doing. Because of these times, and I'm not going to go all into exactly what the times are, but you know what it is. We've got a lot of things going on right now. And now more than ever is a good time to start coming together with people with light minds in your family, your bestie, and all of that. Because let's say you don't have... A place where you're purchasing and so maybe you don't want to dig up that space but maybe grandma maybe mom dad your best friend maybe they have a yard maybe they have a front yard you can do some community gardening you can say hey maybe you're working full-time you don't have enough time if I can use a patch of your land if I can use a little space in your front if I can use a little space on your deck I'll come I'll grow the food and I'll harvest it and then I'll split it with you or I'll grow the food you buy 
the seeds of what you want and I'll put it and we can grow this together. You don't have to do anything, but I need your space. I need your dirt, right? I need the dirt. I need your land. If you got grandparents, hey, guess what? Grandma, I want to grow my food. Can I use your yard? Grandpa, auntie, whoever, this is a perfect time to come together and to work together. So if you have a best friend neighbor, guess what? If they're not using their space, you can use, you can ask to use it and you can come together. And in exchange for using their space, you can say, I'll give you half of my harvest, or I'll give you some salad greens, or I'll give you some fresh tomatoes. Who doesn't want fresh food? Like I hate tomatoes, can't stand tomatoes, but the ones that we actually grow, I can tolerate them. Like I can eat it a little bit in a salad if it has a lot of dressing. <laughs> but on the flip side, I make my own pasta sauce, uh, salsa, tomato bisque soup, and it is delicious because the tomatoes that are in the grocery store, and I know I'm going off on a tangent, they're not the same as the one you grow in your own garden. I digress. So anyway, there are ways to work around where I don't have enough space, I don't own my own land. Start coming together with some people that you can trust, that you have same common interest with, and you help yourself while helping someone else to grow fresh produce that would be healthy for your family. So I hope that I've said something that can debunk these myths as to why we can't grow our own food. I think I'm going to do another video on, um, let me see, it was something else that I hear, their myths, and then um, I have to think. I have it written down in my notes that I, I want to come back on to address in terms of, you know, everything about this channel is going to be about growing food, harvesting food, canning food and all that. So I'm not going to belabor the issue again. Just consider what I'm saying. Grow your own food or at least try start out with a little herb garden. If you just are petrified at the thought of growing some cucumbers or some lettuce, Try an herb garden first, then work your way up to some lettuce, something that's really kind of simple. <sighs> I'll be back because there's a lot of work to do. I've got to pull up some weeds. I've got to get the land ready because I've got some seedlings that are this big. And now that hopefully we've got a little weather settling in that's warm, I can go ahead and I'm going to show you how I'm going to take those out and we're going to get those babies in the dirt. You get some food growing around here. I hope I've answered some questions and encouraged somebody to start growing food. Leave your comments, please. Like, share, subscribe. And um, I think that's it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for watching. And yeah, let's see how I can turn this off.